You are listening to WJMF 88.7 HD2 Smithville Providence, uh, or you're tuned in online at WJMFRadio.com, or if you're on Facebook, welcome into the show. I'm Brian Costa. And I'm Carter Adams. And this is Down to the Wire. Yeah, we got a whole lot in store for you guys tonight. Yeah, uh, big Friday night, uh, t- just to unpack a lot of stuff going on uh, right now in the world. Uh, you know, also also some, uh, just also the last final Friday of these terrible Saturday classes. They're finally coming to an end. Oh, I, I, I can't wait. I frankly couldn't be happier. Got an exam tomorrow that I'm not too psyched about, but, you know, we'll get up getting through it. Yeah. I mean, I, how how's this Saturday class experience been for you? Because I know for me it's been, been just absolutely awful. It's been pretty reasonable for me, actually. Um, I haven't had one in person. Uh, most of the time it's just a, a Zoom with a short assignment online. Yeah. No, nothing really too hard, but I am excited that they gave us another week of back-to-back Saturday classes so that we could just be done after this week. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of a it is kind of a double-edged sword, but I mean, if you do have to be but if there is a time to be done with it, I am just glad that, you know, they are finally just saying, "Hey, this is it." Uh after that after that our Saturdays are finally going to be free again, yeah. which Definitely. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be so thankful for that because I mean, it's just been a rough couple Saturdays. Yeah. I mean, just going 14 straight days in a row. I mean, just crazy. But yeah, uh, let's just jump in. Let's jump into sports, though. Yeah, definitely. Let's go. All right. So I mean, uh, you know, probably one of the bigger stories that came out, uh, you know, b- between our show, between Wednesday's show and today, uh, it was kind of still, br- it was kind of breaking on Wednesday, but uh, w- wanted to get more of the details and wait and basically wait until today. It also inspired uh, today's today's. Uh, Today's, uh, you know, uh, custom jersey. Uh, you know, it involves, you know, former Giant and current Cleveland Brown star uh, Odell Beckham Jr. So, uh, you know, we obviously saw during the LSU championship game last year, LSU went on a hell of a run. I mean, Joe Burrow, you know, it really made his case for uh, him to be the number one pick. And a lot of people now look at that LSU team that won the, won the national championship and argue, and argue if it's one of the greatest college teams ever assembled. So I mean, you know, an incredible run by that by that LSU team, but uh, you know, it was basically what happened after the game that is now causing the large controversy because uh, it was very popular at the time. But basically, Joe Burrow was uh, not Joe Burrow, but Odo Beckham Jr. was basically caught giving uh, players money out of a fanny pack after they had won the championship game. It's now being determined that that that, that, that amount of money was around two thousand dollars. And because of that, uh, LSU has decided to avoid any further investigation and self-imposed sanctions upon themselves because of this ruling. So they, uh, I guess the violation was deemed a level three violation. And Sports Illustrated reported that the, Tig- that the LSU Tigers will lose eight scholarships over, over the next two years. Uh, they'll reduce the amount, they're going to reduce the amount of recruiting visits, evaluations, and communication with, in communication with prospects. And the biggest news is that they are going to be banning Odell Beckham Jr. from its football facilities for two years. Beckham, of course, was an was an LSU alum. He, you know, had he had a very illustrious career there. It was really the, the you know the reason that he ended up getting to this to to you know being drafted in the first place. Uh, you know, had an incredible career there. But you know now he's but now he's suspended from you know being there for two years. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? Um, I think it's completely right. Uh, I think. This should have been taken as a wake-up call for Odo Beckham Jr. He went out there, and he was just extremely unclassy. I didn't like to see it. Um, I'm almost positive he was drunk in the footage. Uh, he, he went out there, and he handed money to college players. That's You, you don't do that. Yeah, it is one of the it big— It just looked bad, especially he, he's supposed to be a professional representing not only his team but the league. And uh, that's just a bad look. It I is one, like it, any part of it. It is one of the big faux pas in uh, of of college sports for these a- these athletes are supposed to be amateurs. They're not supposed to be making money like that. But I, and I do I do agree with that at some point. I'm not I'm not in favor of fully you know of you know fully giving the athletes like contracts to go play at a university. I'm not a big fan of that. But I mean I don't know. I think that there are some instances when it comes to giving guys money for an incentive or something like that. That I feel like could be reeled back in a way. I mean, if a if a player needs to go home and like visit someone, and a coach gives them money for a plane ticket, that's somehow deemed an infraction. There's just a lot of different situations where this comes into play, and I think there are more people just sick and tired of the NCAA's handling of this and how and how you know, uh, and how like wide of a net they cast when with putting these suspensions forward than uh, actually with OBJ's uh, basically actions themselves. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I get it. Uh, OJ, OBJ did kind of look a little classless in that. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was kind of funny uh, giving those guys that money, but <laughs> you know, I mean, looking but looking back on it, I mean, that obviously was going to play poorly with those guys. Uh, you know, 
I, that, I think that is – I think it's really big that, you know, LSU did decide to self-impose these sanctions because OBJ is, I guess, a huge part of that recruiting process for, you know, young talent. Oh, I'm sure he is, yeah. which is why this whole thing surprises me too. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with the fact that it was classless. I really didn't think about it in the ways that you were explaining. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just not – wasn't a good look. After that, I, I did actually lose a lot of respect for the guy. Really? Yeah. That was what made you lose a lot of respect for well, Odell yeah, Beckham Jr.? Sure, sure, it's hilarious on social media if you see Odell Beckham Jr. handing out money to college players. But yeah. you, you don't do that, and you can't do that. It just looked bad. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was just a – He's asking know. for it. He was literally asking for a punishment. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's it's definitely a tough decision to, and definitely a tough thing to yeah. say the least. But and at least if you're gonna try to get away with it, at least don't do it on camera in the locker room. True. I mean, you do have that, and it, it wasn't even in the locker room at that point. There, he was handing out bills in on the field. Yeah, on the he, fi- exactly. Yeah, he classless, w- careless. I mean, it wasn't even like, hey, let's go party, and like, here's a couple. You know, here's a couple bucks to go buy yourself some drinks. It was literally like he's just giving him money on the field. Yeah. It it did kind of look like. He, it did kind of look like a clown show. I mean, LSU did end up winning it, and I mean, congratulations to them. But I and I think the players, you know, I don't, I really don't know how the players are going to be spending that money. But I don't think that they were even looking at it as like, as like, oh, I, I, I played, I, we won the chip, so I'm getting a competitive bonus. I don't think they, I, I mean, if the players had known about like this money coming to them after the game, you know, you could say that had some impact on it. But I don't think they knew about that, which I, I don't know. I think that takes at least some responsibility away from the players, and that's basically yeah. why it's all on OBJ. Yeah, you're right. It should be all, all on OBJ. Yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah. But, uh, even beyond his college career, I just I, I and don't I, see. I and that's part of the reason I, I almost thought that you know the ban the ban on OBJ kind of made a little more sense, but all the other you know things that they did, I didn't think made as much sense unless unless they had evidence to believe that you know, uh, Coach O and all those other guys had knowledge of him, had knowledge of him doing this prior to the game. Not that 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 I thought was a little, you know, a yeah. little confusing because I thought, well, why are you going to turn down your recruiting visits if, like, you had no idea of this happening before the game and just some guy came on the field and just started tossing money at your at your players? Yeah, it was it was clear that they had no no recollection of it before. Yeah, they had, it, it almost looked like Odell like just decided, oh, I'm going to open my fanny pack and start handing out money. There's no way that and now I'm going to and now I'm going to and now I'm going to hurt my college for the foreseeable future. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, just a just a terrible terrible move. So. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we're just gonna. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how, you know, how o- OBJ is welcomed back once his suspension is lifted. I know that uh, there are a bunch of guys that, you know, have had suspensions in the past that have been lifted, and now are trying to, and now the colleges are trying to get them back involved with the recruiting process. I think a Reggie Bush is one of those guys. Oh yeah. I forget exactly what the ten, what the ten year suspension or whatever it was was basically about. I'm not really 100% sure what the what the suspension was about. It was probably about something with, you know, his likeness and money and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, I, I'm wondering if I wonder if there's going to be now some severed ties, with you know between uh, Beckham and LSU. I, I mean, I really hope not. It sounds like Odell is very valuable to that recruiting process, and it seems like he does like the school. I mean, yeah. uh, him and his him and his uh, former alum Tyron Matthew both seem to have yeah. a heavy liking for the school, and I don't think this is going to impact it. I think he just knows this is a basically, unfortunately, at this point, just business. Just business. Yeah, you you, you have to ban him. Yeah, you you do. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, also in football, but now moving on to the NFL, uh, we have a bunch of news in, in that department as well. Uh, some of the biggest news coming out is that, you know, especially for this weekend in Pats Nation, J- uh, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo is coming home. You know, he, he's coming back to the place where it all started. We drafted him back in 2014, thinking he was going to be the heir apparent to Brady in 2016. For a little bit, he was the heir apparent to Brady during that suspension. Uh, what are your thoughts on how do you think that Jimmy G is going to do in his return to Foxborough? And do you think the Pats are going to have enough to fend off that Niners team? Well, if I'm going to be completely honest, I haven't been following the Niners. Yeah, I mean, so uh, Jimmy G this season, honestly, ha- uh, has had a lot of ups and downs. I mean, he had an injury that kept him out for a little bit. He did end up getting benched for Nick Mullins at one point yeah. uh, just to, just after having a really, really poor game. So, I mean, it hasn't been the greatest of seasons for Jimmy G, but – he, but this is still the guy that quarterback to 49ers team to a Super Bowl. Obviously, that 49ers team had a killer defense. But uh, I am wondering how how Garoppolo is gonna you know you know uh, handle the emotions of being back in Foxborough, going against Belichick, and Belichick of all people you know look really saw Jimmy G and really saw him being the future quarterback of this organization. However, Belichick then also knows what Jimmy's what Jimmy's big weaknesses are, and I think exactly. that and I'm, I do think that Belichick is gonna try to attack that. Yeah, I hope he does. Um, 
former quarterback coming into play. Uh, Belichick definitely definitely knows his weaknesses. Yeah. Um, you, you play to that. I think the Patriots – I said this last week, but I think the Patriots will most likely have no issue. You can make the – you can make the argument that this Niners team – you can safely make the argument that this Niners team is on a bit of a Super Bowl hangover, wouldn't you say? Oh, I would say I would say definitely. I mean, yeah. uh, it's been crazy to think about. Yeah, so uh, let, let's just hope that Cam Newton can go out there and get it done. Yeah. Uh, we also have some, uh, some slightly breaking news. Apparently, uh, wide receiver uh, Antonio Brown is reportedly close to a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, you're kidding me. I mean, apparently this is coming in from now ESPN, uh, NFL.com. This is a how long ago? Uh, it seems to it seems like a very. I mean, as of 47 minutes ago, this is you know now seemingly breaking news. Uh, wow. I mean, we were speculating that AB was going to end up as a was going to end up as a Seattle Seahawk, but <laughs> I looked at this comment in the chat and thought it was a complete joke. Yeah, a I thought conspiracy. It, and I now I'm seeing the reports on this computer. This is ridiculous. Yeah, the super team at this point. <sighs> oh, we hate gotta, to see it. You got to be kidding me. You I thought Russell it. Wilson deserved AB, I think, way more than Brady. I mean, Definitely. guess what? I mean, Brady, Brady and him did have a solid relationship, but, you know, and Belichick did work him out, and I do think that this I do think that this is a way that Brady is, in a, in a sense, to get back at Belichick. Wow. Wow. What a move. I, mean, I have no words. I mean – that is going to be a completely stacked uh, offense at this point. Are you sure? Are you sure? I have no clue. Oh, I mean, oh my god. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. I mean, no, you're right. Th- there were stacked. there were reports that the Seahawks had interest. I mean, from Adam Schefter as of two days ago, and they were saying that they were the team to get them, and they were they were going to be the team that was going to be really interested. But the Bucks have swooped in and possibly t- uh, signed Antonio Brown to a one year contract. Yeah, I mean it seemed like him and Brady had a decent relationship when he was coming into New England last year. I mean Brady left Brady, you know, after everything that happened with A B Brady let him sleep in his house with his kids. You know, Brady Brady kind of just saw past of all the drama that happened out in Oakland and wow. is letting him in. I mean so that's some breaking news that we weren't there. anticipating to talk about on this show. Uh what that's gonna be crazy. Crazy. There had to have been some sort of pull by Tom Brady himself. I mean, in Br- the Br- Brady's pulling. There. Brady's pulling all the strings in Tampa right now. Yeah, there is. Wow. An, Bruce Arians has no has no pull on that organization. Tampa Bay is his playground. I mean, yeah, it's exactly what Brady's always wanted to do with an NFL team, but he's never had the chance to do because of because of Bill Belichick. Yeah, because Belichick is deemed as you know trying to build a more quality team instead of just trying to go for these pieces. But uh, I'm wondering what I'm wondering what the what the incentives of these de- of this deal is going to be. I mean, I guess no better time to pull the trigger on something like this than when you're about to actually retire and move to Florida. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm wondering are you are we now going to possibly see Le'Veon Bell versus Antonio Brown in a Super Bowl? Oh my God! Are we about to see this? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, we have some people outside <laughs> some the visitors. radio show. Yeah. Ah, jeez. Ah, but no. So I'm wondering, you know, are we going to end up? It, the poss- it's looking more and more like a possibility at this point. I mean, Tampa is really starting to hit a stride right now. Uh, you know, wow! I thought that for sure. Yeah, Seattle will continue was, to hit that stride now, especially with AB being another target, along with Mike Evans and Godwin and just Gronk and all these guys down there. I mean, I thought for sure. I mean, I was I was one hundred percent sold that this was going to be a Seattle Seahawks move, and and honestly, I am kind of I do kind of have some concerns as to how Bruce Arians is going to handle this. Yeah. I was I mean, completely sold on Seattle too, but I mean, it made the most sense for AB personality-wise because you know Seattle seems like the type of place that can contain it by letting him express himself, but then reeling him back in for the football focus yeah. of it. Uh, I really don't know how Bruce Arians is going to deal with this because I mean, Bruce Arians, you know, he seems like the he seems like the type of guy that you know can he he, he does seem to like let things happen and it's it's like it's like win and you know he has that entire thing of like you know whether we win or lose you know we're still in Florida and we're going to be going off. <laughs> Uh, but I'm just like, I don't know. I, this is an insane move to me. I mean, yeah. the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have now officially gone for it. I thought they'd be doing this in, uh, during next year, and this would be more of a feeling out period like we saw with LeBron in Miami during, you know, those heat days where, you know, that first year was kind of a feeling out period with those guys. And then the second year they really went for it. I thought that's what it was going to be with Brady, but Brady has decided that he's going to go for it this oh, year. Oh, he wants it. He's confident after putting up 38 on answer on Aaron Rodgers last mm-hmm. week. I mean, yeah, he just, I mean, he dominated that Packers team. Uh, and he's and he he smells blood in the water and he wants to go for it. So I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, there are there are headlines that we have broken on the show where it's like, okay, you can respond to that. Yeah, you, this, you can mentally process it within the course of less than five minutes. But yeah, this, but it's this like, is not I just something. Have you, no words. Yeah, this is. I mean, I 
I was worried about this show not having a lot to talk about, you know, because there wasn't a lot going on between Wednesday and Friday. This is something pretty freaking big. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, AB obviously had obviously only played in like one game last year, had the touchdown pass, but then you know after all the controversy and stuff was released soon after. Yeah. I really don't know where. I really don't know. You know, I I don't think that there's gonna be too much rust for the guy to shake off, but, you know. I mean, is there any? Is there really going to be any any big questions now surrounding this Buccaneers team? Yes, uh, I think the biggest yeah. question is can AB hold it together mentally? <laughs> well, yes, that is obviously a huge question. Yeah, uh, that, if, that's if still you do, a big if, concern. And I guess the I guess the other big question can be can Ant, can Bruce Arians handle this team? I mean, it's going to be it's a lot of personalities, and oh, yeah. you know, you know, I mean, he ended up. I mean, he was able to handle like a bunch of you know solid personalities. Like when he was the coach, at, when he was the coach of the Cardinals, he had Carson Palmer and he had Larry Fitzgerald, guys who really aren't going to cause too much problem for you. Yeah. But now you got Brady, you got Gronk, who's a party animal. You have AB, who's a head case. You have all of these different characters. Mike Evans. Mike Evans. Hothead. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Uh, Godwin seems pretty cl- calm, cool, yeah, seems pretty normal. Yeah, Godwin but, seems solid. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Fournette can have a big can have a big personality like that as well. Yeah, and, and I see signs there with Ronald Jones too. Oh yeah, so I mean, you know, that offense has an entire cast of characters, yeah. and, and Brady's and Brady's no exception. I mean, Brady started to, you know, get a little dramatic in those later years oh, in, yeah. in Boston as well. This is, this is reality TV. This is not football. This is not football. <laughs> so it's gonna be crazy to say the least. Uh, you know, but you know, I can't think of anything this else. This was this was so bound to happen. I don't know why we didn't it, see it coming. I I I remember it being speculated, but there was parts of me that was parts of me just going, well. And seeing like all of the weapons, I mean, you're seeing guys like Scotty Miller getting getting opportunities down in Tampa. I mean, that's a that's going to be. A, I mean, I thought that Brady was going to really take a liking to that guy, but that guy's going to be riding the bench for the rest of the season. Yeah. That guy's not going to see the field. I mean, I just I just truly feel played right now. I mean, I'm seeing I'm seeing posts of Antonio Brown and Russell Wilson talking about how excited they are to play together. There were orig- there were also talks. They were like, never going to play together. There were also talks at one point, you know, before they ended up before they ended up really going down the gutter of the Texans, you know, when they were looking they were looking at AD oh, after yeah. trading oh, DeAndre. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that was that would have been an awesome hookup between uh, Watson and Watson and Brown. I mean, that yeah, would have been for for a few weeks until he starts not getting along with Bill O'Brien and then things go downhill. Well, luckily Bill O'Brien is no longer the coach in Houston anymore. Exactly. But, you know, wow, what a freaking move. I mean that is gonna that is gonna definitely that is gonna have land that's gonna have just landmark impacts on the on the NFL. That is gonna dramatically change the course of this season. Yeah, this is this is something we've talked to our kids about. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean we, I mean you know you, even th- I mean when AB went to the Pats, even though even though it was for that one game, I mean, you know even though it was for that one game, I, and I was going, well, how much of an impact is he gonna have in that first game? Like, how much is Bill Belichick really gonna give the offense to AB? And that first game, he gave it all to AB. He did. He, he, yeah. he completely turned the offense into the Antonio Brown show, <laughs> yeah. and in that one week against Miami. And then and then he's gone. So I mean, he is able to just completely turn it around in a yeah. heartbeat. And you know, I think I think Bruce Arians is I think at least Brady is going to get in Bruce Arians' ear and tell him to do the exact same thing. Yeah. And, and and say this is my boy. We're going to run it up, and you know he's going to have at least more than one touchdown pass yeah. from me at the end of the day. Yeah. There's so, unfinished business. It's absolutely. It's a shame that it could not have been in New England, but all things are too good to be true. To I know. A, a Cam to Brown connection would have been solid, but but Bill was sick of him. There was no way. Yeah, Bill not even just in. Cam to Brown, but but anyone. Even yeah, that, even Brady to Brown last year. Unfo- yeah, exactly. The unfo- that Bill season, Brady that season would have ended much differently than it did. Yeah, in my opinion, it would have ended much differently. Yeah, you, you keep a lot of those guys around, and that season's ending a lot differently. Yeah, uh, but I mean, let's try to transition from this Antonio Brown news. It's absolutely groundbreaking to think of, Crazy. but uh, let's try to transition. So, uh, also in the NFL news, uh, you know. We also saw Tua. T- uh, we saw Tua get named the starter in Miami. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the you know the quarterback, he's he is uh, you know surmounting. Uh, P- Fitzpatrick is basically saying that he's devastated by this move. I mean, he's, yeah. Fitzpatrick at this point has been a journeyman quarterback for a long time in his career. He's in his late thirties. Uh, you know, do you think Fitzpatrick should be looking at maybe getting a trade somewhere, or do you think that you know he should just you know try to learn to groom this kid? Yeah, I really think he should, tr- like you're saying, try to learn to groom this kid. Yeah, I, I don't, am. I don't see too much else from Fitzpatrick, I, and I also don't understand why he was quote devastated and heartbroken. Yeah, I it mean, it was happening at some point. It was going to happen at some the point. The fact that and he he wasn't mentally preparing himself is kind of shocking. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was the fact that he thought that he was that he was playing well enough to do it, and I mean, they are second in the AFC East right now. Yeah. 
Uh, so, I mean, he could have been in, of the mindset that, hey, I'm helping lead this team. This kid might be on the bench for the whole season because of that nag and hip injury. That's true, yep. And he thought, that, hey, this could have been my year to really prove myself, and that's getting taken away from him. Yeah. But either way, I think that I really just think that, you know, Fitzpatrick, it was it was bound to happen. And I just I just feel like he was probably at this point delaying the inevitable. Yeah, you're right. I, I really don't see what else he has to prove in the NFL. He's he's really done his part. Yeah, I mean, he's he's had he's had his iconic moments. Obviously, there was that moment down in Tampa where he came out wearing Deshaun Jackson's, you know, jack and outfit. And he looked yep. like he looked like he was out of Miami Vice and he just looked like. Yeah. He just looks hilarious. But you you but... see a lot of these cool moments from Ryan Fitzpatrick more as Ryan Fitzpatrick, the guy, not Ryan Fitzpatrick, the football player. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, his presence on an NFL field is more personality than anything else. I mean, you know, the big story about him going into the week one game against the Pats was, was how long is he going to let his beard grow? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, nobody cared about how he's about to play. Yeah, because they knew how he was about to play. Yeah. He got picked up by Stephon Gilmore instantly. Yep. So, I mean, you know, it's the questions aren't around his play. I think it's just going to be the personality that, you know, a lot of fans are going to miss on the field. Yeah, and point. honestly, that guy could spend maybe two, three, push even five more years as a backup. He could he could do whatever he wants, but I think his personality is going to be he's, 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 he's going to be like a Josh McCown type where, exactly. where he's basically, yeah. you know, I mean, McCown right now is making, I mean, he's 41 and he is making like 12,000 bucks a week to sit on his couch in Texas and – Unless everything goes to hell for the Philadelphia Eagles, he's gonna he's gonna basically just be able to sit home, make that money, and if and if everything does go to hell, he's got he's got a shot to be a quarterback again. And you know that that's really that's the dream basically. Yeah, I mean it's very it's very possible that Tua could get hit one time. The I'm right talking way. About, oh, I'm talking about the Eagles, but not Fitzpatrick's uh, thing with McCown. But yeah, I mean if Tua if Tua goes down, Fitzpatrick's right back in that. So he's he's yeah. also got to prepare himself to say. Hey, one one wrong hit on this guy, I'm back, mm -hmm. and he's got to be he's got to be ready to to know that. Yep. So, uh, you know, that, I mean, it's just crazy to think about. I mean, you know, obviously the Antonio Brown news has stolen has stolen the news. Apparently, there are reports in the chat that it's a done deal at this point. So, just crazy to think about. But uh, some other some other done deals in the NFL uh, would include you know would include a player that we haven't seen uh, take the field in a while. Uh, you know, former Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant. Uh, you know, who last played in 2017 has signed uh, with the Baltimore Ravens practice squad. So Bryant, uh, you know, last played, uh, you know, he played with the Cowboys in 2017. Uh, after that, the Cowboys basically just said, hey, we don't think you got anymore. And, you know, for for some reason, the rest of the league agreed. And yeah. I don't I don't know what the rest of the league really saw at that point, but they just said, yeah, we just don't think this guy's got it. The New Orleans Saints did sign him in 2018 to their practice squad, but he sh but he shortly tore his Achilles soon after that. So yep. d so did Jerry Jones see something in his crystal ball? I mean, there's there. I mean, he saw something very similar with the Dak Prescott situation. He, he didn't want to pay the guy, and you know now just the football guys have decided to break Dak Prescott's ankle. Exactly. And I mean, it just make it makes you wonder like, what does Jerry Jones see that just you know causes him to make these. Seemingly smart financial decisions, but you know yeah. has crippling effects on the players that he's co on the players that he you know ends up you know yeah you know, managing. It's a, it's a crazy coincidence that you you can say Jerry Jones almost has like this crystal ball. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't know what else it would be. It, yeah, I mean it's very weird. You know, but you know Bryant is on the practice squad right now, so yeah. uh, you know. But there are a lot of there are a lot of questions. I mean, an Achilles injury is you know one of the toughest to come back from. I mean, we talk about it at the NBA. There's really not too many guys who can come back from it. Uh, Dominique Wilkins is really the only guy in the NBA who was able to come back better after an Achilles injury. Yeah. Uh, but you think of, but I mean, in the NFL, it's you have a higher shot of coming back from it. Uh, just, just I don't know why, but it just for some reason, you know, it doesn't seem to be as devastating of an injury, but yeah. uh, still a devastating injury nonetheless. Uh, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for Bryant to, you know, I think return to the form he was when he was at his apex. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but what Des Bryant's like main game was was 50-50 balls. Uh huh. And you know the main part of it is that he could t is that he could take a fifty fifty ball and he could turn it more into a seventy five twenty five ball where you know Tony Romo yeah. just Tony Romo is just gonna, is just going to chuck a bomb up there, and you know you know you just got to hope that Des Bryant either going to come down with it or the defender is. And that's why uh, if you if you listen back, I used to compare uh, DK Metcalf to, to to a receiver almost like Des Bryant. Now DK Metcalf is getting compared more to like a Randy Moss type receiver, but. Yeah. You're right. Des Bryant is able to take those 50-50 balls and increase the odds of catching them. Uh, he's just he's big. He's got a solid build. I did see a video of him practicing uh, not too long ago. Yeah. He looks he looks somewhat sluggish. I don't know if the ACL or sorry the Achilles has anything to do with that. 
But I mean, I, he was never the fastest guy. But, oh, never. And, yeah, and it was more strength that he still, would use yeah, so power. He's still almost like sluggish in a way. He, I want to say that he looked like he was ready to come back to make a comeback to the league, but maybe Jerry Jones is right. But we also know that Des and, Bryant. And is, I mean, giving Lamar Jackson another weapon on offense no, definitely yeah, can't help. And I mean, even if even if Des Bryant is is you know only a fraction of what he used to be. I think it can definitely help out Lamar Jackson in that receiving field. Oh, yeah, field, which, I, I certainly think so, too. But Des Bryant, yeah. we know that he has a lot of talent still, and maybe he does some, have something left to prove. You know, I, I definitely think that he that he probably has at least something left. Yeah. Uh, but really just how much is – does he have, like, another year or two that he could really just push for something? Is it enough to get off the practice squad? Really, is it enough? And, you know, if, if the Ravens, a contending team like that, do see Des Bryant as a possible option like that, again, I do kind of question Bill Belichick where, where it's just like – I, where it's like Des Bryant had to have, couldn't have gotten signed for anything more than pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, like, what is Bill Belichick holding back from? Like, what does he see more in Gunnar Oshevsky than he sees in a guy like Des Bryant or a Martavis or, or or actually a Martavis Bryant, who you know also is a free agent has had some problem uh, with substance abuse, but you know also but also is a free agent. There are a bunch of you know NFL wideouts. Percy Harvin is trying to make an NFL comeback. So there are a bunch of you know different guys on offense that you know. At this point, I think the Patriots at least need to consider giving a shot on, especially oh, right. looking at yeah. how depleted their receiver core is. And I mean, Des Bryant just being another guy off the board at this point now yeah. going to Baltimore. And I, can, I think that yeah. I think that I do think that he is going to be sluggish, though. I don't. I really do question how much he's going to have, especially just being out of the league this long. Yeah. Uh, you know, he didn't even go to play in like a CFL or anything like that. Mm. So I mean, he hasn't seen a field in forever, and I do really, really question how much he's going to be able to come back. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Especially with how he played the game, being that guy that had to outmuscle defenders. Can he do this? At, can he do this after such a crippling injury? Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. Uh, you know, also, also for the also in news for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, the Minnesota Vikings traded uh, defensive end Unique Ngakwe to Baltimore in exchange for a 2021 third round pick and a 2022 conditional fifth round pick uh, in exchange for in exchange for the defensive end. Uh, you know, the guy's obviously a beast. It definitely going to help out that Baltimore defense. Uh, what do you thought? What are your thoughts on this move? Yeah, just like Des Bryant can't really hurt. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, much more of an impact player, I think, right right away than Des Bryant will probably be for this team. Uh, but you know, I do, but I do think that this will be you know a much larger impact play than Des Bryant could be. Des Bryant could be gone in a week, Definitely. but you know, and uh, is going to be you know a, definitely a foundation of this defense. Mm -hmm. I think at least for at least for this year, and he's going to help them you know try to try to put pressure on Pat Mahomes in an eventual AFC Championship game. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, you know, it's crazy to think about this Ravens team. You know, they they got an they got an incredible you know defense on the build uh, on the rise. They got Lamar Jackson, who you know is really starting to ascend. Ha isn't really you know living up to the MVP standards he la had last year, but he's doing well enough. And you know, these moves I think will help him. You know, at least try to make at least try to inch a little closer to Casey, who at, who at this point is in their own upper echelon. Yeah, no, you're right. He's definitely not living up to what he was last year, but at the same time, I think uh, his social media presence has a little bit of something to do with that. Yeah, you don't see him. You don't see him as much on there this year as he did last year. Who? Lamar Jackson. I mean, at least this year, I don't. I don't. I mean, obviously, the social media presence is a huge factor, but I don't. I don't oh, really yeah. see him having as much of a. As oh no, statistically. Uh, yeah, statistically, not, that's not, what I mean. Not as much either, but. Uh, yeah, you you don't see him. You don't see his spectacular plays all over your page like you did last year. Not like that. Not, yeah, not at all. Yeah. Uh, but I, and obviously, I do think this is going to be the year that the NFL decides to anoint Russell Wilson as the league MVP. They, they've seen. They, yeah, it's they, pretty they, set in stone. They've just de they've decided that it has you know gone way too long, and they need to do that. Yeah. It's it's basically just set in stone at yeah, this point. No change in their minds. Mark my words. Russell Wilson will be named the MVP. Oh, 100%. Yep. Uh, also, uh, you know, this move also Im will impact the Minnesota Vikings, who traded for the defensive end uh, at the, you know, at the beginning of the offseason. You know, they thought they were going to be going, a l you know, a lot further this year, but, you know, they have not gone off to a good start. Kirk Cousins has not looked solid. Uh, you know, where do you think the Minnesota Vikings go from here? I know Tyler isn't on the show right now, but, you know, he, he is disappointed to say the least. I can guarantee that. I'm sorry, what, what was it that you – you said. I mean, how? I mean, what do you think of the Minnesota Vikings this year? Just, I mean, it seems like they're really just shipping house at this point. Uh, Daniil Hunter, at their other defensive end, has just declared that he's going to have season-ending surgery. So at this point, it really just seems like the Vikings are going to start mailing it in. Uh, yeah, but uh, I 
going to have to agree with you. Uh, Kirk Cousins hasn't looked hot this year at all. What's the record, by the way? Do you know? I don't know. I'd have to check. But uh, just, you know, in general, Kirk just has not performed up to. Not right, yeah. But uh, I do see a little bit of light in Justin Jefferson. I know he's in that top five uh, for receiving yards. That is one of the bright season. spots of, the, of this Vikings team. I mean, yeah. They have looked really solid. I, I, I did not expect that whatsoever when we're talking about Justin Jefferson, but yeah. yes, one in five. Yeah, last. they are one in five. They are last in the division. Even though Detroit, when the Detroit Lions are doing better than you, that that really just says something. I mean, wow. you know, the Vikings. I said they have, did they was it were they the the yeah, were they the, the yeah, wow I can't even speak were they the, the division winners last year. Uh, no, I believe it was the Packers. Was it Green Bay? Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, you know, but the Vikings are very close at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they've been able to compete for, you know, many years now in that division. And, yeah. you know, which was, you know, a, really a breath of fresh air because that division, for, you know, like the Patriots, the NFC North was just dominated by the Packers. Yeah. And, really, you know, the Chicago Bears took it one year. You know, the Viking, the you know, the the one-year Trubisky actually did solid. Yeah. You know, they also took it. and the, But, really, it was the Vikings and the Packers who were – you know, for a little bit swapping it, and at this point it just looks like the Vikings are, you know, just in pure misery. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely surprising that they broke that consistency. Yeah. Uh, one in five is definitely not the way you want to start a season. And it's really just, at this point, a crippling p- point of your season. I mean, you know, an Aaron Rodgers team, you know, I I believe the Packers could have been one, might have been one in five at some point, and, you know, Aaron Rodgers might have gave given like a, given like a, hey, I still believe speech, and they probably made a run for the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, but a Vikings team, I don't think Kirk Cousins is going to be coming in there saying you like that, and the answer is a, is a resounding no. Yeah. And so it, they're not going to be coming back uh, this year. So I, I, I honestly would say on, at this point, maybe go for the tank. Go for the tank. Yeah, go for the tank. I mean, you have to. I mean, you're you only have one win on the year. See see, yeah. what, see what you can get in the draft. I mean, you have a high, you have a good future with That's Justin true. Jefferson. Yeah. You're going to have Adam Thielen still. Uh, you know, maybe you don't go out and get a quarterback, but uh, but really, you know, the biggest question right now is is Kirk Cousins going to be able to really sustain this for the rest of his contract? The answer right now is a no. Yeah, I don't know if I would say go into a full blown tank. There is still a little bit of hope to not finish last in their division. It's not looking too good. It, it, it's not looking too good. The Lions are only one game ahead of them, though. Um, I don't yeah, know. if you're the Vikings, I don't go into I don't go into full tank mode. Get a get a higher draft pick, but not extremely high. You still try to win games. I don't know. I mean, five wins at this point in the season. I mean, maybe maybe in like you know by Thanksgiving, if you have five if you have five losses, it's like it's like okay, we can you know if we we can rally at this point, we can try to finish the season strong. Yeah. Maybe finish like nine. Maybe finish ten and six, nine and seven, and just hope for the best. But you know, having five losses at this point of the year is it's crippling to an NFL team. It's uh, yeah, it's it's no, insanely it really tough is, to come but, out, and you uh, need incredible you just, leadership. You just don't like to see uh, a team. Oh, we have five losses, so we're immediately just going to stop trying to tank because we want a higher draft pick. That's, yeah. that's it's one of the things that's wrong with the NFL. It is. It is one of the things that's wrong with the NFL. But if, but if you know, that's how you have to play the system, then you, you might have to just do that. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. It's it. it's tough to say the least. But you know, let's tra- let's transition. You know, out of NFL and over into the MLB. So in the MLB, you know, we were talking about the World Series, and I and I seemed pretty sure that the Dodgers uh, were going to be handing it to the Tampa Bay Rays. They came out in Game One just absolutely on fire, and I thought. That the the Rays just looked completely stunned. They they looked like they looked like a Tampa Bay franchise that we've seen for you know for many years. But and you know at most Tampa Bay franchises that I've seen you know have looked lackluster to say the least. Uh, but you know they came out and but they came out in Game Two and they really proved me wrong and they they looked really solid in that game. Uh, Blake Snell did a great job shutting down that Dodgers team. Uh, you know their offense came came to life and. You know, the Dodgers just looked stagnant. So, I mean, we do have ourselves a hell of a game here. It is a, officially a five-game series between these guys. So, uh, you know, you know, it's we got game three tonight. We're going to have uh, – we, we got the Dodgers flamethrower, Walker Bueller. Uh, great story with that guy. And he's going to be facing off against Charlie Morton, who was – you know, last year I'd say arguably was in the Cy Young conversation. But because he's in Tampa, such a small market team, didn't get the recognition he deserves. I mean, I remember seeing Morton at Fenway Park in 2019 – uh, the guy was on fire. I mean, he, you know, he's one of those guys. He was on that Houston Astros team. He was a pitcher, uh, but you know, when that Astros team was super loaded, when when they had guys like Keiko, when they had Verlander and all those other guys, uh, just dominating that team. You know, he was one of those guys that was just forgotten for a little bit, and it was just like, oh, Charlie Morton. You mean like the you mean like the fourth or fifth starter? And for a while, you know, that's that was the, the that was the amount of talent that guy did put out. But he went to Tampa Bay. He you know somehow found a way to reinvent the wheel on his career. 
and he is thriving. And he does seem like a type of guy that, you know, this will be a much more interesting game than I think it's gonna than I think many people will lead to believe. Definitely. I'm I'm very excited for this game three. Uh this I mean especially seeing where this is gonna go. I don't want to say this is gonna swing the series because you know I've been proven wrong once. Uh but game three definitely I and you know I actually don't think I can actually say it. I was going to say that I think Game 3 can swing the series, but given the state of this World Series, I mean, you're not going between home field advantage and all these different places. You know, Game 3 of a traditional World Series would be, you know, the team's first game in the opposing team's ballpark. That would That's what Game 3 would typically be. Mm -hmm. And you'd go to the other team's ballpark for three straight games, and you come back for the last two of Game 6 and 7 if, if necessary. In this situation, you're in Texas the entire seven-game series, so I really don't even know if this, if this, how much of an impact this game might even have at this point. I thought it could have a much larger impact going into the show, but kind of giving it a little more thought, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is there anything, is there anything that uh, has surprised you in this World Series so far, especially like the play of Mookie Betts? Is there really anything that you know has come out and shocked you so far, or not really? Oh, well, I mean, I, I definitely, uh, I was on board with you. I thought the Dodgers were going to come out in Game Two and give it their all again, but no. Nah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's much more of an interesting series than I thought it would be. I mean, Tampa Bay has, you know, I would say, you know, they have, you know, for many years I've seen, you know, Tampa Bay franchises, you know, they made a run at the World Series in 2008. In 2013, they gave the Red Sox a series, you know, after winning their wild card round. Uh, but for many, many years, the Tampa Bay Rays have, you know, you know, just been in a steady, steady rebuild. And, you know, you know, frankly for them, they finally hit their stride. They've lost a lot of... You know, high-end executives like Andrew Freeman to the Dodgers. They lost Heim Bloom, who's gone to the Red Sox. I don't really like what he's what he's done here, but a lot of Tampa Bay fans are gonna thank, are gonna end up thanking him for for like what he did down there. Uh, you know, it's definitely tough to say the least. I mean, I think that I think that this Tampa franchise has faced a lot of adversity, and the fact that they've been yeah, that they've been able to overcome all of it is a, is incredibly impressive. I mean, they've been able to come overcome through so much. They, I mean, there was a there was a post that went out. It was of a Rays fan at the Trop. He had a plastic bag over his head, and he said, "He said the Rays trade everyone." And literally, it was it was two years ago, and it was all like these. It was all like these really good players that the Rays traded, and now two years later, with, with an entire new cast of characters, with guys like Randy Rosarena, uh, who you know, basically a year ago or or you know a little bit over a year ago, was playing baseball. You know, in uh, playing baseball across the ocean. Uh, this guy, I mean, this team is incredible to say the least. If if they, I hope the Rays win it because you know, you know they 100% deserve it. I think the, I think the Rays, I hope the Rays do it, even though they're in the same division as the Sox. I 100, I'm 100% on board with seeing the Rays get a chip. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean the Dodgers have been the Dodgers have been cursed since the 80s and haven't been able to pull one in. Uh, but you know, after seeing what Tampa's been able to do. You know, finally give that city a championship. You know, try to try to really, you know, bring in the fan base for those guys. Get that new stadium that you've been gunning for, and Rob Manfred has denied for, has, has denied you for years because you're still under some stupid contract with Tampa Bay. You're you're still supposed to play in that you know, uh, parking parking garage of a stadium you call the Trop. Uh, you know, hopefully you can get out of there soon, and you know, hopefully a chip will you know you know put the pressure on Manfred to finally give you the recognition you deserve. No, yeah, you're definitely right. But I think a lot of this World Series uh, goes <laughs> goes into the possibility of a dynasty, in, or not a dynasty, sorry, uh, another title town. You think so? You, you think about L.A., uh, Lakers just won a championship. Uh, Dodgers could potentially win a World Series. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning just won the Stanley Cup. Uh, Antonio Brown is now a member of the Tampa Bay exactly. Buccaneers. Uh, and you know, if the Rays win, then you could potentially see three championships in Tampa Bay this year. Yeah, which would, which you know is something that you know Tampa Bay has not seen. I don't think Tampa's seen a championship at least since 2002. Maybe maybe the Lightning won another one in the in the in the late 2000s. But you know Tampa Bay has as you know been you know completely just you know not been able to reel in a championship for yeah. a long time. And they're finally getting theirs, and it is crazy to see. Yeah, it is crazy that the uh, the this be happening to the Rays right now and and the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean franchises that have seemed to be cursed forever are, yeah. are finally getting their big break. Definitely. So crazy to say, crazy to say the least. Uh, you know, the other thing at MLB that we had talked briefly about on on Wednesday show before we ran out of time was that uh, Rob Manfred uh, is basically saying that he hopes the rule changes in the MLB uh, stay for stay uh, for the for the imminent future. Uh, some of those moves in include starting extra innings with the guy on second base, uh, having a DH in both leagues, uh, just a bunch of different rules that, you know, frankly, I'm not the biggest fan of. 
uh, you know, there are some other rules that I'm trying to think of, but I, uh, oh yeah, there is the other rule that I believe is now permanent that, uh, and that is that a pitcher, you know, coming out of the bullpen needs to face at least three batters before he can be, before he can be replaced. These are just some rules that I just don't think are great for the sport. I don't, I think it completely messes with, uh, you know, the, with all the game planning that these guys do going into it. And frankly, it just seems more like fantasy baseball at this point than than the actual sport. Yeah, you're right. It, it we've talked about this the past uh, few shows. Um, it definitely makes me question the legitimacy of baseball. Yeah, I mean they they've been poorly managed by Manfred, and, and it's making people miss Bud Selig, who a lot of people in the NFL, uh, not in the NFL, in the MLB, uh, Selig was the former commissioner before Manfred, and people thought that Selig was kind of a joke. He did a lot of things that were quirky and a lot of fans weren't a big and you know a lot of traditional baseball fans weren't a big fan of at the time uh one of the bigger ones that i can remember that he did that you know some baseball fans actually do did seem to like is that uh he made he made that the winner of the mlb all-star game would actually have a home field advantage in the world series yeah so he did that in order to you know make the game less of a less of just kind of a meaningless scrimmage and try to give meaning to a game like that which honestly, I, I did like the idea of it. Uh, I know that there were some people very critical of it, saying saying like, well, you know, half these teams aren't, you know, well, only two of these teams are even going to be in the World Series. What does it really matter about re- representing your league? Uh, but some of the moves that Rob Manfred made, frankly, I don't think that uh, that Bud Selig made. Uh, my apologies. I don't think that they were nearly as uh, catastrophic and you know and really ground changing as the ones that Rob Manfred are making. The ones that Rob Manfred are making are blatantly changing the game of baseball. Uh, the ones that Selig made were kind of like little, like, like little like tidbits and little like fun, like you know, like little like extra things that it's that if like a non-baseball fan was to look at, it, I'd be like, hey, look at that. It's but like the things that Manfred are doing, it's things that everybody is going to notice. Hey, we've seen this happen in baseball for you know literally centuries. Why is it changing now? Yeah, and I, I'm I'm just not a big fan of it. I think that this guy has completely just ruined the integrity of of MLB and. You know, when when the when the owners have the next opportunity to vote this guy out, they need to because their sport is depending on it. No, you're right. It definitely is, and I, I can hope they do. Yeah. Uh, one sec. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when we're talking about these these new baseball rules and talk about starting extra innings with a with a runner on second, it just seems like it just seems like a you know like a fun backyard baseball game you'd be playing. But, I mean, this is the actual sport. Like, you can have, like, those little, like, caveats in, like, Little League and stuff like that if you're trying to speed up the game. And I know that's what MLB's trying to do, and they're trying to speed up the game. But, I mean, you have, like, those little rules in those Little League games because because you don't think that they can handle the actual— it's a Little League game. And you don't think they can handle the actual intensities of the of the big of the big league sport. Yeah. These these are the professional athletes who play in the highest league that is that is basically available for these guys. They shouldn't have to be babied. Yeah, you're right. They're so, not children. Yeah, they're not. So I don't know. There's just been a lot of things that I've been mad about in that in that area, but I don't know. That's really all that's all that's been in MLB news. Uh, some other big news uh, coming out this weekend uh, is that this Saturday we're going to be seeing a big MMA fight. I know, I know we don't talk about too much about MMA on this show, oh, but never. Uh, but we're going to be seeing a big fight this weekend. We got uh, we got Khabib versus Ju- uh, you know the we got the Russian Khabib. He's currently 28 and 0. He's going to be facing off against uh, against the United States uh, against the United States fighter uh, Justin Gaethje. Uh, you know Gaethje does is is a little bit taller than them than uh, Khabib, but they're the same weight, same uh, same reach, uh, same stance. Literally, everything about these guys is very similar. Uh, Khabib's style is more wrestling based, and you know Gaethje is more of a striker. Yeah. Uh, you know Khabib is you know just been an absolute monster these past couple you know his past couple fights. I mean. We saw him absolutely just brutalize Conor McGregor in the mm-hmm. ring. Uh, there was a clip that came out on Twitter I was seeing of apparently like when he's beating the crap out of these guys in the ring, he's like actually talking to them as he's doing it, yep. and, and he, he's he's just like, "I want to be the champion," and he'll just hit another, <laughs> he'll just hit him, and like he'll just say like, "Hey, just please give up," yeah. and he'll be he'll be like he'll be like, "You good?" and like, and then the ref will pull him apart, and he'll be like, "Hey, it's just business, man, just business," yeah. and like he just does all like these, it's just all this trash talk. I mean, I know that we're not the biggest fighting guys, but uh, seeing seeing that wrestling type in Khabib going versus a striker in Gaethje, do you think Gaethje can pull off the impossible, or do you think that the you impossible? Know, or do you think that, or do you think that Khabib is just going to run this league? Oh no, is going to run it My for as long as you think. One hundred percent on Justin Gaethje. Really? Oh yeah, easily. Uh, I had a chance to watch uh, Justin fight against. Uh, forgive me if I if I mess up the name. Tony Ferguson. 
That's probably right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a chance to see him fight against Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson and, and actually win. Tony Ferguson is, is notoriously notoriously known for having an iron jaw. Yeah. And he, he didn't actually knock out Tony Ferguson. This is like April or something like that. Um, he actually caused the ref to, to stop the match because Tony Ferguson was just so beat up. Really? So beat up. And Justin Gaethje, ever since I, I watched that clip, my money is just all in on him. He's... Like you said, he's a striker, but he's also ruthless. Yeah. I mean, Tony Ferguson was standing there shaking his head because he couldn't take the hits anymore, but he wouldn't get knocked out. Yeah, I mean, he t- Tony Ferguson is a tough guy. He's not going to go down by any by any means of it. Exactly. Uh, I I don't know though. I mean, Khabib is just Khabib is just you know a freak of nature. I mean, I mean, if Gaethje does land a good strike on anyone, that guy's going down. Uh, but frankly, I think that you no, know, right. I fr- I frankly think Khabib's going to run is going to run uh, his division until. Basically until he's done. All right. Well then, let's put money on it. Then. I'm not putting money yeah, on yeah. anything on this down show. Down to the wire fans are witnessing oh, this nah. firsthand. The first down to the wire bet. Okay. I Brian. I think Khabib's got to take it. I mean, Brian, if I, Gaethje wins, you give me ten dollars. If Khabib wins, I give oh, me ten dollars. Oh stop. Make it interesting for the fans, man. Come on. We have two people watching the show. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Make it interesting for the fans. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. I bet. If you're so confident, dude. If I don't. You're so confident. I. I mean, it's it, tough though. Khabib. It's tough though, because I mean, I. I think Khabib's a monster, but I don't think that. But I also don't think that. And I, but I also don't want to vote against the American. But, oh, okay. I want to go. I want to go for the American, but, and you know, I hope that I. Re, part of me is hoping that I do have to give you those ten bucks, and I hope Gagey does beat the crap out of him. So you like Khabib enough to to rant about him and how he's going to run the show, but you don't like Khabib enough to put your money on him. Yeah. Frankly, I mean, it's Frankly. it's it's the it's the dumbest thing, but I just. All right. Well, if, if you're hearing this, I, I like Justin Gaethje enough to put my money on him, and I really? think he's going to beat Khabib. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see it, and 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 I'd love to give you those ten bucks, but frankly, oh, we just I shook on it, man. We just yeah. shook on it. No, I mean, I'm and I'm saying I hope I hope that I do have to give you those ten bucks, but frankly, I I think that I think that Khabib is just going to just be too much for him to handle. I think that yeah. I think that if he gets him on the ground. It's just going to be over. No, it will be over if he gets him on the ground. Yeah. But so I mean, Gaethje's got to come in early. You yeah. know, the the only thing I see really uh, that's going to you know allow Gaethje to you know win this thing is that he's just got to come out. You know, fire come out swinging. He's got to come out firing on yeah. all cylinders, and he's got to get him in that. First, he's got to literally get him in the first round. Hundred yeah. percent. Like he, he can't wait. For, he can't take this thing like a couple rounds and you know let yeah. Khabib get him on the ground and you know do some ground and pound. No, Gaethje's got to come out there swinging. You know. Aiming for heads and just hope and just hope to God he can get him out of this fight as soon as possible. Yeah, no, Th- that that is what Gaethje's going to have to do because if Khabib takes this thing to the ground, it is over. I agree. I w- so that's so that's that's where I'm having a little bit of an indecision, kind of going on. Uh, but you know, before we end up going down to the wire, we uh, I was talking with you about this earlier. Uh, we like to talk a little pop culture and just different things going on with the show. Uh, you know, th- obviously last night we saw the final president. De- uh, we saw the final presidential debate between Joe Biden and President Donald Trump. Uh, we don't normally talk politics on the show, but, uh, but you know, uh, what were your thoughts on the on the last debate between those guys? Oh, we're, uh, we're talking debate. I mean, I mean, obviously, like we're not too political yeah, no, in, right. in general, but uh, you know, obviously less fireworks than the last debate, oh, uh, yeah. to say the least. I mean, the last debate we, we talked about on the show, that it was a joke. Yeah. I mean, this one was less of a joke, but still, they were at least able joke. to rain. They were at least able to remain somewhat cordial. Yeah. When you brought up pop culture, I thought you were for sure. You were about to bring up the, the fast and furious movie. I was, I am going to bring that up too. Uh, yeah, but, but, but I was just thinking about it. Yeah. What were your thoughts on just like the, on the debate in general? I mean, I don't want to say too much, but it, it was a lot less of a joke. And, um, I mean, there there was I still think it was a lot more civil. Too. Yeah, there were still more some there were still some moments that had I think a lot of people shaking their heads. Yeah. Uh, but in general, I thought it was a I thought it was much well coordinated, uh, you know, by everyone involved. I think the I think the moderator, you know, was was able to reel things much better than Chris Wallace did. Oh, you're, oh, uh, so much better. I mean, yeah, Wallace let that thing completely get out of hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, oh, they started turning off microphones last night. Yeah, and, and I think that I think after seeing how badly that first debate had uh, had to have gone. I mean, I don't even. I personally don't even know if, if that if the moderator did that well. I think it's just that literally every other moderator in in this in this debate session has done so poorly. Yeah. I mean, you have the you have that lady in the in the vice president presidential debate, who was and she was just cutting people off left and right. Uh, I was uh, Kristen Welker. Like the one thing that she did that was just better than everyone else is she just let these guys talk. Yeah. No, you're right. She did let them talk. 
Yeah. Um, and it almost seems to me like like uh, they're just poking at each other. Oh, yeah. It's trying it, to get them to it's, blow up. It's childhood playground stuff. Yeah, it's it's terrible to watch. It's actually saddening, <laughs> but it's depressing. Oh, uh, yeah. No, but it, it really is. Yeah, but then the other thing that you were talking about uh, 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 pop culture-wise is that this was trending on Twitter, I think, a couple days ago. And it was that the you know the beloved Fast and Furious franchise is going to be ending their is going to has decided they're going to be ending their uh, they're going to end their series after two more movies directed by Justin Lin. Uh, you know the Fast and Furious franchise has been going on since 2001 has had a lot of famous people in it: Ludacris, uh, Vin Diesel. Way too many. Uh, yeah, no, there's uh, John Cena at this point. Uh, the Rock. <laughs> We've had way too many just uh, names and names yeah. of people just going on in in that series. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on this series coming in, coming to an end? I mean, I, I certainly think it's time. <laughs> uh, I mean, twenty years. I, th- I think. And and by the time and you, usually they release a movie like every two years at this point. So this will probably so it'll probably be like what like twenty twenty four twenty five by the time like it's that. over. I think that's still way way too long. I mean, this started as this started as a movie about cars, but now like, <laughs> but yeah, this started as a movie about cars. But you know, I remember like in the seventh and eighth one, it was about there was uh-huh. like some there were like secret like military missions. Yes, it's, it's it got, ridiculous. It's it got, gotten so out of hand. It got so. I mean, they just completely there lost was, the point there was of an, what it's there was supposed a, to be. I mean, they had like. They had to deal with international terrorism. It got <laughs> it got so out of hand yeah. so quickly. No, I, I actually watched Tokyo Drift not too long ago, and I will say that movie was not terrible. I mean, and yeah, that's because I'll, it was one of the one of the earlier ones, and but, it, and it didn't have Vin Diesel. As exactly. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, but different actors. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just gotten so out of hand. Like I said, oh lost God. the complete purpose of what the movie was supposed to be. It's been twisted and is notoriously <laughs> known as an action movie, purely action movie. Movie, no plot it was whatsoever. yeah it, as i was saying it was originally just a movie about cars and it was it was it was like hey oh, uh, sick some action a little bit of plot and like some car chases now it's just like now like i remember watching the seventh movie and it was, it was just like oh they're going out of a plane yeah oh they're, <laughs> they're driving off of buildings and surviving now yeah I, yeah there was the there was a part where they went like what was it like abu dhabi or like <laughs> or something where he literally drove between two buildings <laughs> and it's just like oh. what the hell yeah ridiculous i mean uh, you know, it's kept, I'm wondering how I'm wondering like what craziness they're gonna do to end all of it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I was seeing the trailer for like the last one, and like you know they were they were on like an island in the cars, and they like tied vines to the cars, yeah. and they were like flying between like a cavern yeah. or something like that. Uh, just absolute like craziness in that in that film franchise. Oh man, uh, th- I can you I know can... Th- they jumped the shark a long time ago. Yeah, I... and it's it's <laughs> probably time. I cannot even find a word to describe the feeling. Uh, it happens so often when I'm watching TV and I see and I see a trailer for another Fast and Furious movie. It happens way more often you than you would think. And it, and it's just like, what are they gonna do to up the to up and the ante? Liter- literally, I will say to myself, "Wow, <laughs> another Fast and Furious, Furious movie. When are they going to end that series?" And we finally got our answer. It's gonna be up to two more movies. We think, Hope but so. we'll have to see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and the series. And the series. I mean, the other good thing about the series possibly ending is that we're gonna is that they're gonna pull out all the stops in the fi- in the finale. So oh, yeah. I have no clue what they're gonna do. They're probably gonna go space. Fireworks, atomic bombs. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably the, how they're gonna have to do it. There's probably gonna have to be an atomic bomb just for the entire like universe of that thing to end. Oh, yeah. just, like there's no other way that, that no series can way. end, you know, without just life itself just ending. Oh you know what? Just just to humor myself a little bit, I think I'm gonna watch the last two. Oh, I will too. Hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's gonna be hilarious. It's no different than watching a stand-up comedian on Netflix. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, that's obviously really fun to talk about. But it is currently seven fifty-eight. We are officially down to the wire, which means we're gonna go through everything we talked about in the past hour before we send you off for the weekend. Uh, in the NCAA, Odell Beckham Jr. was suspended for two years after giving uh, LSU players money after winning the championship game versus Clemson, forty-two to twenty-five. Uh, uh, the, the Tigers will also lose scholarships, and you know, ha- and will be forced to re- and will be forced to reduce recruiting visits as time goes on. Uh, in NFL news, Jimmy G is returning to Foxborough this weekend to take on the Patriots. Uh, in Miami, Brian Fitzpatrick is reportedly heartbroken after after being benched for two for two attempts of Viola. Uh, in the for the Baltimore Ravens, Des Bryant has been signed to the practice squad. Bryant hasn't appeared in an NFL game since 2017. He was signed to the New Orleans Saints practice squad in 2018, but he tore his Achilles shortly after. 
Unique Ngakwe has been traded from the Minnesota Vikings to the Baltimore Ravens in exchange for a 2021 third round pick and a conditional 2022 fifth round pick. Uh, the Vikings are apparently looking to ship house and, you know, it, these moves are making it more apparent in the MLB. The Rays have, sh the Rays showed a big in game two of the world series and game three of a uh, game three of the world series tonight between the, between, you know, righties Walker Bueller and Charlie Morton. Gonna, I think it'll be a really good game. We also discussed the, the, uh, you know, the, the, you know, kind of the disappointment Rob Manfred has brought to the game of baseball by saying that he thinks his, that he thinks the rule changes for this temporary season should remain permanent. Uh, in MMA, we got the big fight of Khabib versus Justin Gaethje this weekend. It's going to be a big fight. We shook on it. I think Khabib's just going to run this division, but Carter, is, but Carter <laughs> seems fairly certain that Gaethje might pull off one of the biggest upsets that we've seen in very all certain. Of... I'm very certain. You know, do you Watch. you know how big of an upset this is, right? Oh yeah, like I'm completely. Aware. Like this is larger than the Philadelphia Eagles over the Patriots in, in Super Bowl Fifty Two. Like this is larger than the Giants over the Patriots in the in that Super Bowl. Like this is one yeah. if if you get that right, that's one of the biggest upsets that mm -hmm. ever gonna happen in in all of sports. No, you're right, and Justin Gaethje is the guy to do it. All right, I'll hold you that. I'll hold you that. Hold and me then, to it. And then in and then uh, in pop culture, we discuss the we discuss the final presidential debate and discuss the and discuss the you know the future of the of the notorious fast and the furious movie franchise oh yeah they've they're saying they're going to end after two more movies i remember just watching those movies back in eighth grade just seeing i remember when the seventh one came out i, I went to go see the seventh one twice uh one one was with my friends and then another one was for a birthday party and it was just hilarious seeing like just some of the some of the like just funny stuff going on in that movie <laughs> Uh, you know, there was just, I mean, obviously there was the heartwarming tribute to Paul Walker at the end of the movie and, yeah. and different things like that. So they have been able to have really, you know, have, have like really, you know, good inspiring moments yeah. at the end of movies, but it's really, but it is tough to have a lot of inspiring but movies after, about cars where, where Vin right. Diesel is trying to say family. It's so hard to put meaning into those, but yeah. Uh, after these last two movies, what's the final score? How many Fast and Furious movies did we get? Uh, I mean, 15, something like that. I mean, so this is, so fast nine is coming out. Uh, it was supposed to come out, uh, this summer, but got yeah. delayed because of COVID. Uh, there's technically 10 fast and furious movies because of that Hobbs and Shaw movie. So there Ten. will be, so there will be 12 movies. 12. Oh there will be 12. Fast and too furious. many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's crazy to say the least, but, uh, you know, it, there's just a ton going on in, in the sports world and pop culture. And we can't wait to get, we can't wait to cover more of it next week. Oh, but yeah. Uh, you've been listening to WJMF 88.7 HD2 Smithfield Providence, or you've been tuned in at WJMF.com, or you've been watching here on Facebook. Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, from Down to the Wire, I'm Carter Adams. And I'm Brian Costa. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, we appreciate all the